Time now for the morning rush. Houses of worship are running at full capacity following the state's revised public health order. Yesterday was the first Sunday since the start of the pandemic. The churches were able to gather at 100%. However, the Archdiocese of Santa Fe has asked Catholic churches to keep with the state's red to turquoise framework, limiting attendance for now. Also, police are investigating a deadly shooting outside of an all subs police. Say yesterday, an employee claims he was on break in his car when Jeffrey Miller confronted him about buying cigarettes despite the store being closed. It turns out both men were armed. Investigators say the employee told officers he shot Miller because he saw the man reach for his gun. Miller died. Well, the city of Albuquerque is now debuting its virtual visionary series online and on public access channels. Videos range from the local culinary scene to outdoor adventures and even some spooky spaces. 17 content producers were picked for the project. That series runs each Saturday through May 22nd. Erica. Here's a look at the drop off forecast this morning for you kiddos heading off to school. Temps in the low 50s, so be sure to put them in a light jacket. I'd say a windbreaker is a great idea because later on we're expecting very windy conditions across the entire state. Some New Mexico students will return to class with memories of their first COVID sanctioned prom. Las Cruces High School hosted the outdoors event on Saturday. Students were required to stay in squares that were taped on the ground. District officials made the choice to host the dance after the county moved into the yellow tier. Well, the city is calling it a hub for film, entertainment, and soon pro sports. Now it's tossing $8 million into upgrades to make it easier for you to travel to Mesa del Sol. The upgrades are on the bridge at University Boulevard over the Tijeras Arroyo. The city also plans to install a better drainage system, improve traffic signs, and widen the sidewalks. Erica. Here's a look at the Metro Threat Index, keeping it low to moderate today. We do have these cool temps in the morning and by the afternoon, wind gusts to around 35 miles per hour, but that's it. New Mexico crews are working to figure out how two wildfires started. Officials say the Peterson fire outside of Las Vegas has burned 30 acres since Friday. At last check, it's about 70% contained. Meanwhile, the Paradise Loop fire sparked west of Moriarty over the weekend is because of burning debris. Well, that has burned 52 acres and has destroyed three buildings. That's about 65% contained. Campaigning will begin for Albuquerque City Councilor Lance Senna, who says that she will seek a full term. Senna was appointed by Mayor Tim Keller last year to finish the term of late Councilor Ken Sanchez. She represents Albuquerque's Central West Side. Her seat is one of five city council positions up for re election in November. A New Mexico community is now adopting a village in Africa. A message to a man in Madrid ended up creating a friendship across the globe. A boy in Uganda inspired Brian McMahon to start, uh, start by sending seeds and then sponsoring a chicken farm. 54 kids are sponsored for a boarding school and an orphanage is being built. Meanwhile, a community in Albuquerque even started their own village partnership. UNM students are showcasing their talent in a new series, a little festival of new plays. Kicked off with the premiere of The Bat. More plays will premiere with topics ranging from online relationships to how they perceive identity. Tickets are free, but donations will be accepted for the UNM Theater Program Fund. Now let's get a look at that morning drive. Here's a look at the maps. Uh, it doesn't look like we have any accidents or slowdowns. And here's a look at Tracker going east on I 40 at Rio Grande. And things are moving right along on the roads. We'll let you know if that changes. A New York man's bizarre proposal is going viral this morning after he got his pregnant friend and the fire department to fake an emergency labor to distract his now fiance. His soon to be bride, Amy, is a maternity nurse. She immediately sprung into action. That's when Mike drops to one knee. Get this, she said yes. On this day in 1960, we had some severe weather in southeastern New Mexico. A tornado touched down near Hobbs, but there was no damage reported. It was in an open field, and a farmer in Lovington was struck by lightning. Time now for the five facts. At number five, a New Mexico community is now adopting a village in Africa it's to help with everything from fresh water to taking care of orphans. Now, this all started with a Facebook message a few years ago. A boy in Uganda inspired Madrid resident Brian McMahon to do more. So he started by sending seeds and then sponsoring a chicken farm. Then others in the community joined in and they created the Village Alliance. So far, they've sponsored 54 kids to go to a private boarding school and an orphanage is now being built. At number four now, the city will be upgrading the entrance to the place they call a hub for film, entertainment, and soon pro sports. City officials announced $8 million will be used to upgrade the bridge at Mesa del Sol to make it easier for you to travel there. The upgrades to bridge at University Boulevard over the Tijeras Arroyo will include a better drainage system, additional lanes, and improved traffic signs. The improvements will also allow for easier access to the Estleta Amphitheater. And with strong winds and dry air expected across the state today, 
Everybody will be under a red flag warning during the afternoon to late evening, and that means that there will be very high fire danger. There's already two wildfires burning in New Mexico. Let's not add any more. Number two now, the country's largest reservation is moving toward herd immunity after being one of the hardest hit areas by the pandemic. McKinley County, which consists of parts of the Navajo Nation, ranked sixth in the nation for COVID deaths per capita at one point. The Navajo Nation's high death toll led to massive vaccine clinics. The tribe's chief medical officer says their efforts have led to more than 70% of the Navajo Nation receiving at least their first dose. And at number one this morning, the most talked about story of the morning is this, houses of worship running at full capacity over the weekend. Yesterday was the first Sunday since the start of the pandemic that churches were able to congregate at 100%. The governor's public health order was updated to follow the U.S. Supreme Court's decision on the limit for church capacity. The justices ruled if the state can be open at 100% capacity, like schools, churches should also have that option. For some faiths, parking lots so were full. And, however, the Archdiocese of Santa Fe has asked Catholic churches to keep abiding by the state's red to, tur red to turquoise framework as for capacity limits.